Welcome back. And now for the news in detail. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received in the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and a number of officials at Safriya Palace, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom as part of his current tour in a number of countries in the region. His Majesty welcomed the U.S. Secretary of State and reviewed with him the course of bilateral relations and the means of developing them and strengthening the framework of cooperation and joint work in all fields. His Majesty expressed Bahrain's pride in its historical relations and close partnership with the U.S., which span a long history of mutual understanding, cooperation and coordination to enhance common interests at all levels. He stressed the Kingdom's keenness to strengthen strategic partnership relations and its aspirations to strengthen coordination and cooperation with the U.S. to achieve the common interests of the two countries and their people. During the meeting, regional and international developments were also discussed, as well as the latest developments in the Middle East, including including the situation in the Gaza Strip. His Majesty the King stressed the necessity of achieving a ceasefire, protecting civilians, releasing hostages and detainees, ensuring the delivery of humanitarian aid to the residents of the Gaza Strip in accordance with international humanitarian law and preventing their displacement. The U.S. Secretary of State stressed the U.S.'s support for concrete measures to establish a Palestinian state, stressing the rejection of the forced displacement of Palestinians, whether in Gaza or the West Bank. The two sides also stressed the importance of reaching a comprehensive and lasting peace in the Middle East as it is the optimal way to enhance security, stability and peace in the region for the interest of its people as well as working to avoid exacerbating the conflict in a manner that threatens regional peace. In a statement following his meeting with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken affirmed that Bahrain is a critical partner for the U.S. He also affirmed that the discussion with His Majesty focused on the ongoing conflict in Gaza, not spreading to other places. It's been an intensive diplomatic push across the region. Uh, Bahrain, of course, is a critical partner for the United States, home to the Fifth Fleet, and I want to thank His Majesty King Hamad for receiving us today and for the very good conversation. Um, we were focused uh, on making sure that the conflict uh, ongoing now in Gaza doesn't spread uh, to other places. That's been our focus since, uh, since October 7th, uh, and it remains our focus uh, today. Um, that makes it particularly important that we respond when we see something like the aggression coming from the Houthis that continues to be uh, repeated directed at shipping in the uh, Red Sea. Uh, there have been uh, thousands, hundreds of attacks now since uh, November uh, on shipping in the Red Sea, affecting um, more than 40 countries, tied to, to ships with, uh, from 40 different countries. Uh, and uh, we had the biggest attack, UAVs, missiles, just yesterday. Um, these attacks have been aided and abetted by Iran with technology, equipment, uh, intelligence, information, and they are having a real-life impact on people. You know, we talk about concepts like freedom of navigation and the importance of holding it, and I know that can sound a little bit uh, abstract, but it means something very real in the lives of people. What's happened because of these Houthi attacks against commercial shipping is that thousands of ships have had to divert uh, take longer routes, pay more for insurance, and that gets translated into higher prices for people for everything from uh, fuel to medicine to food. It's disrupting supply chains. And so it's having a real impact on people around the world um, in uh, their daily lives. We know all about the hostages in Gaza. Well, the Houthis have taken more than 25 hostages from the ships that they've seized since um, uh, since this fall. So all of this has required us, this, this challenge, this threat to the interests of countries around the world has required us to respond. We put together Operation Prosperity Guardian uh, with um, more than 20 countries, including uh, Bahrain, 
uh, to do everything we can to preserve freedom of navigation, freedom of shipping in the Red Sea. And in fact, uh, the United States and the United Kingdom, two participants in Operation Prosperity Guardian, responded effectively to the attacks just yesterday. Uh, we also had um, uh, some 20 countries come together to make clear that uh, if these attacks continue, as they did yesterday, there will be consequences. Uh, again, this represents a clear threat to the interests of countries around the world, and it's important that the international community come together and respond to them. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed the launch of the second edition of the television program Gedha. All citizens of the GCC countries will have the opportunity to participate in the program due to its success in its first edition. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed providing the opportunity for GCC youth to showcase their abilities and highlight their strengths. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the program had a high number of views via the Shahid streaming app and received positive reviews on social media. His Highness noted that the program's positive reputation is based on the objectives, which include fostering a positive spirit of challenge, determination, and will, His Honor Sheikh Nasser wished all participants luck and success in their participation. He emphasized the importance of preparing for the second version of the program to match its first success. His Honor Sheikh Nasser expressed his appreciation for all the efforts made by all those involved in this program. The organizing committee announced that registration will be open via the following website, gedha.tv. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust and chairman of the Board of Directors of Temkin, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, laid the foundation stone for the Al Khalifa Military Sports Center at the UK Naval Support Facility during a ceremony held under His Highness's patronage. Upon his arrival, His Highness was received by the UK Ambassador to Bahrain, Alastair Long, Royal Navy Commodore Philip Dennis, and the UK Naval Support Facility Commanding Officer, Commander Alex Savage, along with other senior BDF officers. His Highness highlighted the strength of the long standing Bahrain UK strategic partnership which spans over 200 years His Highness noted that relations continue to advance thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa the supreme commander of the armed forces and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince deputy supreme commander of the armed forces and prime minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa His Highness emphasized the role of the UK naval support facility since its establishment in 2018 in consolidating mutual military collaboration between the two kingdoms the ambassador expressed gratitude to His Highness for his patronage and for laying the foundation stone of the project. He commended the strength of the Bahrain-UK relationship and noted the role of the UK Naval Support Facility in enhancing cooperation, affirming that the Al Khalifa Military Sports Center will benefit the facility's personnel.
Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Hassalah delivered a speech at the launching ceremony of Bahrain's edition of Al Ujarit calendar. The ceremony was held in the Ayam Media Center in operation or in cooperation rather with Al Ujari Scientific Center in Kuwait. Hassalah affirmed the importance of strengthening GCC relations by creating a common information base, particularly in the scientific research and astronomical sciences. He noted that the visions of His Majesty the King encouraged scientific research, which is crucial for achieving sustainable development. The chairman noted that Al Ujari calendar is considered one of the distinguished scientific and astronomical productions of the al Ajeri Scientific Center. He said that the late Dr. Saleh al Ajeri was the first to develop modern astronomical calendars in the region, and his calendar was an official reference for many countries, including Kuwait and the GCC, since the launch of his first calendar in 1938. Information Minister Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi and Italian Ambassador Paola Amadi witnessed the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between Bahrain News Agency, BNA, and the Italian news agency, ANSA. BNA Director General Abdullah Khalil Buhaji and ANSA CEO and Director General Stefano Di Alessandri signed the MOU virtually. Dr. Naimi confirmed that this MOU comes within the framework of the strong relations between Bahrain and Italy. The minister noted the continuous growth these relations are witnessing in light of the royal directives of his Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in a way that serves the common interests of the two friendly countries. He pointed out to the development the Italian media witness at all levels expressing his aspiration for the success of the cooperation. The minister praised ANSA's role as one of the largest international news agencies and its long history in the field of news. The Italian ambassador expressed her happiness in signing the MOU, praising the progress witnessed in Bahraini-Italian relations at all levels. She praised the ministry's keenness to develop cooperation with Italian media institutions, expressing her confidence that the media cooperation will constitute a qualitative shift in bilateral relations between the two countries, wishing Bahrain and its people continued progress and prosperity. NSA CEO and General Director expressed her gratitu his gratitude for the cooperation, stressing that it represents a good opportunity to enhance various aspects of news exchange between the two sides. The Shah's affairs at the Bahraini Embassy in Rome, Talal Faisal al Hamar, was also present. A press conference was held at the Bahrain National Theatre in the presence of the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in addition to a number of ambassadors, sponsors, and media personnel. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, the Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Center for Culture and Research, and Al Dana Amphitheatre, in cooperation with Al Rawak Art Space, Al Barh Art Gallery, Art Concept Gallery, and La Fontaine Center for Contemporary Art announced the activities of the Spring of Culture Festival. On the occasion, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed affirmed that the festival continues to enrich the cultural movement in Bahrain as one of the most prominent cultural seasons in the kingdom, adding that the Spring of Culture is an opportunity to strengthen communication between the civilization of Bahrain and other civilizations. The festival will start tomorrow with a variety of cultural, musical and artistic activities and performances. The Spring of Culture returns this year with a diverse lineup of events covering music, theater, arts, and many forms of cultural heritage. We are confident that this heritage, uh, that this festival, is, is an expression of our shared heritage, whether it's local or international. Uh, and we welcome uh, the visitors and Bahrainis to enjoy what has been lined up for them uh, by the different stakeholders engaged with this festival. And all the information is available throughout the digital platforms. We're really, really happy to be representing the United States government today at this wonderful launch event for the Spring of Culture. Uh, we're very, very happy to work with BACA and the uh, Bahraini government yet again to deliver some uh, American culture here in Bahrain. We have a hip hop group. They will be break dancers who will be performing uh, as part of the Spring of Culture. And there's a number of other American artists who are also involved. I also do want to say that uh, we're very happy to be introducing sort of the youth culture of the United States. Now, at this time, we're actually celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop, the founding of hip hop. And so we're really happy to be able to deliver some of that energy and creativity to Bahraini audiences. 
The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, met with his Egyptian counterpart, Engineer Ahmed Samir, on the sidelines of the meetings of the Supreme Committee for Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development, currently being held in Bahrain. Fakhro stressed the depth of relations between Bahrain and Egypt, noting the importance of enhancing prospects of cooperation and joint work in various sectors, including enriching the economic sectors and exchanging expertise in the industrial and commercial fields. Meanwhile, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro, received the Minister of Industry, Trade and Supply of Jordan, Yusuf Mahmoud al Shamali, on the sidelines of the Higher Committee for Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development held in Bahrain. The meeting reviewed joint economic relations and ways to strengthen them. Fakhro affirmed the Bahraini Jordanian relations, noting the importance of expanding joint cooperation, including in the economic sector. Industry and Commerce Ministry Under Secretary Iman Ahmed al Dosari chaired the Executive Committee of the Integrated Industrial Partnership with the participation of committee members and chairmen. Representatives of industrial companies in Bahrain from the UAE, Egypt, Jordan and Morocco were also present. The meeting included workshops and discussions on the topics of metals and automobiles, agriculture and food, petrochemicals and pharmaceuticals. It reviewed proposals and projects to prepare the final report to be presented to the Supreme Committee regarding the latest achievements and proposals to develop and empower the industrial sector in these countries. The Archaeology of Irrigation Technology and Water Management in the Islamic World Conference concluded, which was held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and was inaugurated on behalf of His Royal Highness by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The last day witnessed a recommendation session during which Professor Timothy Insall from the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at the University of Exeter in the UK stressed the importance of directing more attention to the issue of water management heritage. The Director of the Department of Archaeology and Museums at the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Dr. Salman al Mahari expressed pleasure with the success of the conference at all levels as it witnessed remarkable interaction from speakers and listeners. The conference participants produced a set of recommendations, including encouraging cooperation between researchers and institutions to continue research into irrigation and water management technologies and strengthening partnerships and networks to exchange data, methodologies, and results to enhance collective understanding of these systems. Since its launch in 1999, the Crown Prince International Scholarship Program enabled the elite of distinguished Bahraini youth to receive education at the most prestigious international universities and to contribute effectively to building the nation and supporting the process of progress and prosperity. Since the launch of the program, 246 scholarships have been provided in nine different countries. The scholarship students studied in 69 higher education institutions, while the program's graduates obtained quality jobs in 141 international institutions. On January the 6th, the program celebrated the Silver Jubilee of its launch. Over the course of 25 years, the program has created and continues to create an innovative and creative generation that is confident in its abilities to contribute to making achievements in all fields. UAE President Zahra Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan participated in the 10th edition of the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit in India following an invitation from the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Held in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, the three-day summit is being attended by numerous heads of states, government officials, decision makers and business and finance professionals from around the world. Speaking at the summit, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed thanked Premier Modi for the invitation and congratulated him on the summit's 20th anniversary. The UAE President noted that the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit has become an important international forum for the exchange of expertise in economic growth and investment. His Highness thanked the event's participants and organizers and expressed his best wishes for the success of the summit in achieving an outcome that fosters cooperation, development and prosperity for everyone involved. UAE President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and Indian Premier Narendra Modi met to discuss the strong historic ties between the UAE and India. During the talks, both sides emphasized their mutual commitment to expanding the scope of bilateral relations, particularly in the areas of the economy, energy technology, climate action and sustainable development. They also agreed to leverage all available opportunities to achieve the objectives of their developmental partnerships. The talks also touched upon developments in the occupied Palestinian territories. Several MOUs were signed between both sides including investment cooperation in the development of food complexes, investment cooperation in renewable energy, investment cooperation in innovative healthcare, and understanding on establishing sustainable, green, and efficient ports.